Hey everybody, welcome to The Commit. I'm here today with Taylor Plimpton, who's a senior developer at Small Planet, and we're gonna talk about making games. Taylor, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, great being so, here. So, uh, tell us a little bit, what is, like, what do you actually do at Small Planet? Kind of my day-to-day -day is like, we have a stand-up every morning, talk about what we did yesterday, what we're gonna do today. Uh, if I'm in the middle of a ticket or a story, then I just pick up where I left off. If not, then I go to what we call, um, it's, it's Pivotal Tracker, but we're also using Jira sometimes depending on the client, and we just kind of like find stories that need to be done and start working on those. Um, but that's usually like while a sprint is in progress. Um, towards the end of a sprint, we have the, the whole review process that we do as uh, a team, and usually with the client, the client gives us feedback. We kind of maybe switch gears, go back and fix things, iterate on things, or if not, um, just keep moving in on the priorities we had already set. Cool, so it sounds a lot like maybe game development isn't that different from what a lot of, say, mobile app or even web app developers would be familiar with on, like, sort of, at least the day-to-day -day level. Yeah, totally. I mean, we do apps and games, so, yeah, we try to keep the process relatively the same. I think it's more or less the way you kind of come at the project is a little different between games and apps. Cool. And so how did you sort of get into the space? I mean, like, building games is a little different. Uh, yeah, so uh, kind of growing up, it wasn't really a thing, like it was just starting to become something that like um, you buy games for whatever console you have and like my parents were kind of like, you only get two hours a day to play games and <laughs> like stuff like that and it was kind of like not your normal day whereas now it's obviously become pretty the norm. Um, so On the subway, walking down exactly, the street, everyone's yeah. playing a game. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, in the car ride or whatever, just occupying your mind, just playing games like uh, Knights of the Old Republic kind of inspired me to like get into it and see like I love the whole aspect of like designing a game and coming up with like what the game is, what the mechanics are and, and that type of stuff. Um, so it's actually kind of interesting that I ended up more on the programming side of it. Um, and I think the reason I ended up there was because um, the programs I went into kind of gave you both aspects. They gave you that game design, game development side and you kind of got to choose which path you wanted to go down. Right. I mean, and you'd even had some experience maybe like programming stuff on your calculator, right? Yeah, like yeah. some old like TI-82 games? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I did a bunch of like uh, word-based games on my calculator when I was in high school and um, made like a soccer game, uh, basically just like a PK shooting thing. Like you choose where on the goal you want to shoot and then the goalie is just completely random. So do you have any advice for someone who's looking to get into game development? You've always been doing it professionally for a little while, so. Yeah, uh, I guess first and foremost, make sure it's actually something you're going to enjoy. Um, some people kind of come at it and think it's games, it's going to be fun, I enjoy playing games. But that's not necessarily always the case, it's obviously going to be hard work or yeah. Unity is totally free to use. You can do tutorials, stuff like that, you go to meetups, talk to people, just try and like get a foot in the door and just see what's out there. What's like the most misunderstood thing about making games and being in game development? There was that movie, Grandma, Grandma's Boy, that uh, a lot of people were like, oh, this is awesome. But like, <laughs> testing games is not just playing games. Testing games is figuring out where problem areas might be, figuring out what the actual problems are, and being able to communicate that and tell them like what the repro steps are. Because without repro steps, it's really hard for us to be like, okay, there's an issue here, but why? Like, how do right. we reproduce it to figure out what's breaking down and what we need to fix? Do the tools and the tech vary between, say, games and apps? Or is it um, pretty similar? For the most part, I mean, if you're just doing vanilla using uh, Xcode and, and whatnot, yeah, those aren't going to change too much. We've recently been working with Unity which um, I don't see, I mean, you could totally do it, but there's not too much point to making just a straight up app with Unity because you're not utilizing all these game engine features that it supports. Right. So that'd probably be left with a really heavy binary yeah. file. Yeah, exactly. Cool, so you mentioned a little earlier that like having a really good mechanic is an important part of the game experience, but, or even just having like a, a nice immersive world, but is that, will that alone make the game successful? Um, I definitely think first and foremost you have to have a great mechanic. You have to have something that's fun and engaging. I don't know if that's always the best place to start. The UI, it's kind of a combination. Like You could totally make a game without great assets, but who's going to want to play something that isn't terribly fun to look at? Like A lot of people look at the App Store and they're going through and 
they don't like what they're looking at, so they're not going to download it necessarily. So unless you're Flappy Bird, in which case you can have an ugly game. <laughs> yeah, that's, people like it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm still surprised. I think he was surprised by that one, to be honest. <laughs> but on top of that, having great design, great experience in terms of the UI is is pretty key because if somebody's getting frustrated with how they're like navigating the app, then why are they going to want to keep using it? Uh, I guess how do you interact with your team, right? Because it's not just you putting together an entire game. Yeah, so um, we usually stick to smaller teams, maybe like three to six-ish. Um, there's a producer, there's a couple of developers, a couple of designers, and sometimes we have some animators. And then um, on the day-to-day, -day, I'm, I'm dealing with both designers, producers, and maybe my other developer in terms of uh, designers like giving me assets or we're kind of working on a scene together. Um, we use uh, XML a lot to kind of design our scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I've set up some sort of process and I describe that to them so they can figure out how to set up the XML. Uh, with the producer, it's more or less figuring out like what I need to iterate on or understanding a story better, stuff like that. Do you get a lot of input on the game itself? Or is it sort of like, here's the game design, go build it? Um, kind of depends on the client, but for the most part on most of our projects, yeah, we've been um, all very involved in the game design. Um, clients will come to us with game designs, and, and a lot of times we don't, I wouldn't say push back, but we try to like work through it with them, and, and usually they're very happy to do that just so we can kind of like get the best of what we want to get out of it. Um, but in most cases, yeah, we're, we're very involved in the game design process, which is great because that's actually one of my favorite parts. Right, you're not just knocking out tickets, you actually get to have some creative input yeah. over that. And I think that's um, a key part of having the small teams and maybe also the small, smaller company, like 30-ish people, like we're not kind of bloated with the infrastructure of like all these different levels and like different um, branches of the company. Uh, do you have any advice for, for people who would maybe, who kind of like on the fence about where they see themselves in game design versus game development? Because it sounds like they're pretty different. Yeah, um, <clears throat> if uh, in my case I found that I enjoyed the, the problem solving aspect and the actual like writing these algorithms and being able to write things and then kind of like run it and test it and just being able to see that, that quick like I wrote this and it does this, like that's immediate feedback and it's, it's pretty satisfying. I think if, if you're not of the mindset that like you really enjoy math and whatnot then if you're more creative, being able to come up with like what the game is um, is obviously like pretty satisfying in itself because when somebody gets to play your game, you're like, I came up with that idea, you know? Mm -hmm.